Today on Bears TV, we're going to remove the mystery and show you how to identify when your carbon blocks really need to be changed. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of BRS TV How To's. This week we're going to shed some light on why, but more importantly, when to change your carbon blocks with an emphasis on something definitive and not just some random statement like every six months. The biggest reason to monitor and replace your carbon blocks is because disinfectants like chlorine and chloramines not only oxidize the surface of your RO membrane, which will reduce its performance and usable life, but chlorine and chloramines also easily pass through the thin film membrane and increase DI resin consumption. I recently tested chloramine rejection on a typical Dow 75 gallon per day membrane on our water here at BRS, and over 80% of the chloramines pass straight through the membrane. Keep in mind that chloramines are chlorine attached to ammonia, so both are getting through and rapidly consuming DI resin. One interesting note with chloramines in particular is if you properly treat for them with the correct carbon block, some of the ammonia will be converted into harmless nitrogen, but even better, the thin film membrane will reject almost all of the residual ammonia split off of the chlorine and protect the DI resin from being prematurely depleted. Okay, so how do you know when to change them? Well, advice ranges from every six months to a year, or you can even use a flow meter to measure the volume of water that's passed through the filter. This isn't bad advice. However, everyone's water is different. Some use chlorine, some use chloramines, all at different levels and pHs. So there isn't a one size fits all answer that's really all that accurate. Best advice is just test for chlorine after your carbon blocks and make sure no chlorine or chloramines are breaking through. The easiest way to do that is to test with a total chlorine test strip like this one. Total chlorine will read both chlorine and chloramines. Start by running your system for 30 minutes and then take a sample from the wastewater line on your RO system. Dip the end of the test strip in for two seconds, wait 10 seconds and take a reading. Personally, I would change the blocks if you get a reading of 0.5 or above. The reason I say wastewater line is because this is the water that's passed through the carbon blocks but not the membrane. Since disinfectants readily pass through the membrane itself, passing through the membrane canister should have very little impact on the concentration of the chlorine or chloramines. By using the wastewater line, you're also making sure the system is operating at typical operational flow rates when you take the sample. So that's all there really is to it. Forget the random time frames or estimated flow rates and do a super simple 50 cent test every month or so to identify when the filters really need replacing. These test strips work really well in a simple task like this, but I know some of you like having something a bit more accurate, so the HANA HI711 Total Chlorine Checker is a great option for you. There are two other things to consider when changing your blocks. One, you may need to change them if you neglect your sediment filter and they get clogged with sediment. Easiest way to identify this is by checking the pressure gauge on your system or installing one which will tell you if there's a pressure drop between the carbon blocks and membrane feed line. Most people also replace their blocks every year or so automatically as a preventative measure against biological or bacterial fouling as well. If you have any questions or suggestions on how to test or replace your carbon blocks, check out the comments area down below. If this is your first time with us, hit that subscribe button because we do two new reefing videos every week. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.